Green hydrogen is transforming industries far beyond energy. And in one corner of New South Wales, Australia, it's now transforming agriculture. At the heart of this story is an ambitious partnership between US-based energy optimization company Ampt and New Zealand's green hydrogen developer Hyringa Energy. Together, they're building something that could redefine how we think about clean fuel, fertilizer, and farming. A project that doesn't just talk about sustainability, it grows it. The site near the agricultural town of Mori hosts the Good Earth Green Hydrogen and Ammonia Project, also known as YGE. It's the world's first attempt to fully integrate solar power, battery storage, hydrogen electrolysis, and ammonia synthesis directly into cotton farming operations. Here, technology isn't just cutting emissions. It's rewriting the rules of how rural industries can produce, store, and use energy locally. At the center of this experiment is AMP's breakthrough DC optimization technology. Traditionally, large-scale solar and storage systems rely on alternating current coupling, converting DC power from panels into AC power through inverters, and then back to DC again for batteries or electrolyzers. Every conversion loses energy, drives up cost, and limits system control. AMP's approach changes that equation. By deploying a string optimizer architecture that allows solar and battery systems to share a common DC bus, the project minimizes conversion losses and enables faster, more precise control of power flows. This kind of DC-coupled hybrid architecture might sound technical, but it's a quiet revolution. In simple terms, it allows the same electrons that leave the solar panels to be used directly for charging batteries or splitting water in the electrolyzer, with fewer losses, fewer components, and lower cost. For the Good Earth Hydrogen and Ammonia project, that efficiency translates to more hydrogen per unit of sunlight. And that's a game changer in the race to reach the long promised two per kilogram cost of green hydrogen. Hyringa Energy, which has built its reputation on developing renewable hydrogen infrastructure in New Zealand, saw the opportunity to extend its vision across the Tasman. Partnering with Ampt and Sundown Pastoral Company, the owner of Good Earth Cotton, Hyringa designed a system that links every stage of the low carbon value chain. Renewable energy powers electrolysis, the hydrogen produced feeds an ammonia synthesis unit, and the ammonia becomes low carbon fertilizer, used directly on the cotton farm itself. It's a perfect circular economy in action. The project's numbers tell their own story. The hybrid energy system includes around 27 megawatts of DC solar capacity, paired with 30 megawatt hours of battery energy storage. That's enough renewable electricity to run an entire local hydrogen plant and produce roughly 4,500 tons of low carbon ammonia each year. In doing so, the operation is expected to cut emissions by more than 17,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent annually, not by offsetting emissions somewhere else, but by displacing fossil-based fertilizer at the source. At the core of that achievement is system design efficiency. By coupling the solar and battery systems directly on the DC side, AMP's string optimizers manage voltage and current more effectively. The result is higher yield from each solar string, a smoother power supply to the electrolyzers, and a much simpler integration between components. In the traditional model, each subsystem, solar, storage, hydrogen, might be treated as a separate engineering package. Here, they act as one organism. It's the kind of systems thinking the hydrogen sector has long needed but rarely executed. This integration solves one of the biggest technical barriers in green hydrogen, renewable intermittency. Electrolyzers like stability. They prefer a steady, predictable flow of electricity. Solar, on the other hand, delivers peaks and troughs. By inserting an intelligent battery buffer controlled through a DC optimizer, the system feeds power to the electrolyzer at a consistent rate, maintaining production even as clouds pass or sunlight fades. The result is higher utilization, longer equipment life, and lower cost per kilogram of hydrogen. It's an elegant solution to a messy problem, and it highlights a key truth about green hydrogen development. The future breakthroughs aren't just about better catalysts or cheaper electrolyzers. They're about smarter integration, making every component, from solar panel to storage cell to reactor, work together as efficiently as nature does.
For the cotton industry, that integration means something profound. Cotton farming has long been dependent on nitrogen-based fertilizers, traditionally made using fossil-derived hydrogen through the Haber-Bosch process. Each ton of ammonia produced from natural gas emits roughly two tons of CO2. By using hydrogen made from renewable power instead, the ZEGHA project breaks that dependency. The ammonia produced here is not just cleaner, it's local. Farmers use it directly on their crops, creating a tangible, traceable, low-carbon supply chain from energy to fabric. This farm-to-fuel-to-farm loop makes the project one of the most concrete examples of how green hydrogen can decarbonize not just energy, but materials and agriculture. And it's a glimpse of a future where hydrogen becomes a building block for everything from fertilizer to shipping fuel, integrated into real economies, not just theoretical roadmaps. Government support has helped make it possible. The New South Wales government, under its Net Zero Plan 2020-2030, committed about AUD 35.8 million in grants toward the project. That backing recognizes hydrogen's role not only in energy transition, but in regional development. Clean ammonia production brings new technical jobs, increases local energy resilience, and creates export potential for low-carbon agricultural products like Good Earth Cotton, which already sells climate-positive fiber to global fashion brands. From a financial standpoint, the integration model offers lessons for project developers worldwide. In traditional hydrogen plants, most costs are locked in the electrolyzer and power infrastructure. By co-locating production with demand, in this case a farm that uses ammonia on-site, Yeja avoids the need for pipelines, liquefaction, or transport. That drastically improves the internal rate of return and reduces risk. Instead of chasing uncertain export markets, the project monetizes hydrogen immediately through fertilizer sales. AMP's DC optimizer technology also contributes to the financial equation. By simplifying the electrical balance of system, fewer inverters, smaller transformers, less wiring, total capital expenditure drops. Lower losses mean lower operating costs and improved control means higher asset utilization. It's a virtuous cycle of efficiency that's essential if green hydrogen is to compete with fossil fuels on price. For engineers, there's another dimension. The project's modular architecture shows how future hydrogen systems might scale. Each hybrid block, solar plus storage, plus electrolyzer plus converter, acts as a self-contained module. Add more blocks, and you scale production linearly without major redesigns. This modularization could enable hydrogen projects to grow like data centers, efficiently, repeatably, and with standardized components. And that's where AMP's String Optimizer innovation shines. In data centers, power electronics ensure maximum uptime and power quality. AMP's technology brings that same philosophy to hydrogen, real-time optimization at the string level, turning variability into stability. It's an approach that allows renewables to directly power industrial processes without depending on the grid. For Hiringa Energy, this project is a continuation of its pioneering work in renewable hydrogen mobility. In New Zealand, Hiringa has already built one of the first national networks of hydrogen refueling stations for heavy trucks. Extending that vision to agriculture reflects a broader strategy. Use hydrogen wherever it solves a real decarbonization problem and provides commercial value. In farming, that problem is fertilizer. In transport, it's diesel. In both cases, hydrogen offers a zero emission substitute that can be produced locally. Projects like Gegia also highlight the strategic value of coupling hydrogen with ammonia. Ammonia is easier to store, transport, and handle than hydrogen gas. It also represents a dense energy carrier that can double as a fertilizer feedstock. In a decarbonized world, ammonia could play multiple roles, feeding plants, fueling ships, and storing renewable energy. That multifunctionality is why analysts increasingly view ammonia as a key link in the green hydrogen economy. Still, challenges remain. Producing hydrogen and ammonia at small scale can be expensive. The electrolyzers and reactors used in this project, while efficient, operate at modest capacity factors compared to fossil-based chemical plants. But as technology improves and projects like this demonstrate proof of concept, economies of scale will kick in. 
What matters now is showing that the model works, technically, economically, and environmentally, in real-world settings. That's exactly what Ampt and Hiringa are doing. Their partnership demonstrates that innovation and power electronics can ripple across entire industries. By optimizing voltage at the source, they make every downstream process, from hydrogen production to fertilizer application, more efficient. This is how clean technology matures, by stitching together known components into smarter systems. From a policy perspective, the implications are equally important. Governments around the world are looking for practical hydrogen success stories. Big export projects like NEYAM in Saudi Arabia or High Deal Spain show scale, but they're years from operation. By contrast, a working hybrid system on a cotton farm in Australia offers something immediate. A replicable template for regional hydrogen hubs that serve local industry. That aligns perfectly with strategies in Europe, Japan, and the United States, where hydrogen clusters are being designed to integrate renewables with nearby demand centers. At its core, the Amt Hyringa collaboration addresses three critical frontiers in the hydrogen economy cost, integration, and demand. First, by lowering system losses and simplifying architecture, it reduces cost. Second, by merging solar, battery, and electrolysis on the DC side, it achieves integration. Third, by anchoring production to a real industrial off-taker, cotton farming, it guarantees demand. This trinity of cost, integration, and demand may well define the next phase of green hydrogen development. For the global hydrogen community, the project also underscores an emerging theme, the convergence of clean energy and smart electronics. As renewables become the backbone of the power system, control at the DC level, once an afterthought, is becoming critical. DC optimization allows renewable plants to act dynamically, balancing power among solar arrays, batteries, and industrial loads in real time. In other words, the intelligence of the grid is moving closer to the source. This trend matters because it opens the door to new efficiencies across sectors. In transportation, it could mean more stable power supply for hydrogen refueling hubs. In manufacturing, it could stabilize electrolyzers attached to variable renewables. And in agriculture, not even as the Good Earth Cotton Project shows, it could close the loop between energy and food production, creating self-sufficient low-carbon ecosystems. Imagine a world where every large farm operates like a micro-hydrogen hub, producing its own fertilizer, storing its own energy, and feeding its own crops with minimal emissions. That's the vision embedded in this project. It's not about massive export terminals or national grids. It's about distributed decarbonization, where hydrogen is produced and consumed locally, tailored to the needs of each community. For now, the fields near Mori may look like any other cotton operation. But beneath the rows of plants and panels, a new model of sustainable industry is taking root. One that ties photons, electrons, and molecules into a seamless chain of value. It's a model that could inspire similar initiatives in Africa, Asia, and the Americas, especially in agricultural regions with abundant sun and growing energy demand. As the world pushes toward net zero targets, these integrated hybrid systems may become the backbone of a decentralized hydrogen economy. By combining mature renewable technology with advanced power optimization, Ampt and Hiringa have built more than just a project. They've built a proof of concept for the future of sustainable farming and hydrogen production. And for professionals, developers, and consultants looking to enter this fast-evolving space, platforms like H2Hub, at ReneEnergy.com are designed to help you do exactly that, providing training, templates, and expert insights into how to plan, finance, and execute real-world green hydrogen projects like this one. Whether you're modeling levelized cost of hydrogen, designing hybrid systems, or structuring offtake agreements, H2Hub gives you the tools to bridge the gap between ambition and execution.